Good morning and welcome to What's Mike Doing? So today we're going to talk about preheating your aircraft engine. Um, when we get snow out, bad weather, we start thinking about how cold is that engine, how cold is the oil, and is it going to be okay just starting it? Or do we need to warm it up first? These are questions that go through pretty much every aircraft owner and flyer's mind when it starts getting cold in the winter. This is your first time here. My name's Mike, and what I do here is fix, repair, maintain, build, and fly both certificated and experimental aircraft. And my goal with this show is to encourage you to pursue the mechanical side of aviation. Okay, so first question is, why do we even preheat the engine at all? The common thought is because it, we need warm oil. If we have warm oil, uh, we all know that oil flows better when it's warmer, and so if we have an engine that's too cold, the oil can't circulate through the engine, and then of course we'll have abnormal wear or catastrophic wear if it's super duper freezing. But that's not actually true. Reason why is because these days, for the vast majority of us, we use multi-viscosity oil. What that means is when it's cold, it still flows. And when it's warm, it still flows like it normally does. <clears throat> and that allows the oil to do its job even though it's cold. So the real reason why we preheat the engine is because an engine is made of dissimilar metals. We know that when metal is cold, it shrinks, and when it warms up, it expands. Which would be fine if the entire engine was made out of one kind of metal, but it's not. It's made out of multiple different kinds of metal. And different kinds of metal expand at different rates. Steel and aluminum the main ingredients of an aircraft engine expand at vastly different rates. When it's cold, our clearances in our bearings, um, our gears, the entire engine, all of the clearances are tight. You'll notice that if you try to spin a prop around in the winter when it's super cold, it'll actually be harder to turn. And that's not because of the oil being cold. That's because the engine is like pinching itself all up. So when you preheat the engine to a normal temperatures, it expands all the clearances to which they were designed to be at, which allows the oil to get in there. So when you have your clearances too tight, the oil can't even get in there, even if it's warm, flowing really well with high pressure. There needs a certain amount of room in there just for the oil to get in there. So, what is too cold? Well, Continental says 20 degrees. Uh, anything above 20 degrees Fahrenheit, you don't necessarily need to preheat. Lycoming, however, says 10 degrees, other than a couple of uh, I think their helicopter engines have, they draw the line then at 20 degrees, but otherwise it's, for everybody else is 10 degrees. Well, the experts in the field recommend 30 degrees. That's kind of the generally accepted safe margin that if it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which is freezing, if it's below freezing, preheat the engine. If it's above freezing, you're good to go. Just make sure it's warm after you start it, etc., so forth and so on. So personally, for me, with my airplanes, it's 30 degrees. As long as they're above freezing, I'm good to go. If it's below freezing, I'm gonna preheat. So how do we preheat? Pretty much any way that you can think of, you can use. You can use combustion, as in like a propane heater. You can use an electric heater, electric home heater. You can use 
like a Tannis heater, which is um, installed on the actual engine and it's there all the time. You just plug it in and it warms up, kind of like a diesel block heater uh, for trucks and cars. Um, the key isn't what kind of heat you use. It's just got to be heat. The difference in what you need to pay attention to is how long does that heat actually need to be on there. And that depends on a number of factors. That depends on, again, what kind of heat, how many watts are you pumping into the engine, do you have a blanket over it, is, if you don't have a blanket, how far away is a heater, is there a wind chill factor, all of those things. With my old Cessna 150, the way I used to preheat it was I would open the battery, or the, where you check the oil above the battery, and I had a little uh, electric heater that was like this big, and I'd put it in there and close the door and turn it on. And then it, it would warm up the engine over a period of hours. Um, so what I actually did was I got one of these bad boys. This is a Milwaukee. It's an infrared temperature gun. Um, it's got a little laser in there. And then, as you can see, it tells you how hot things are. Okay? So my forehead right now is 76 degrees. Seems kind of cold. What you need to know uh, is the temperature of the engine. Because if you superficially just heat it, Again, all these wind chills and, and different things. You need to check, I, what I would do is put the heater on there when I first got my system of how I was gonna heat it. Um, I had some cowl plugs in there. Like I said, I put the heater inside the cowl and turned it on and I would check it over like a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. And I would check the temperature of the oil sump mainly uh, and then temperatures on the cylinders and then find, trying to find the coldest spot and trying to get that coldest spot to be above freezing round. I would go above that at that point once I had the heater on, it'd be 45 degrees, 50 degrees. Um, and I, generally that meant I had to leave the heater on for like a, a couple hours to really actually, you, you think it's easy to heat the outside of the engine, but when you're trying to heat the oil inside of the engine, it, it can take some time, you know? It's not a super quick process depending on how you heat it. I've seen people use um, electric heaters for household heaters and then run it through some ducting and put that ducting into the bottom of the cowl uh, and then and heat it from the bottom up and that works too. And again, it just depends on how fast you're actually heating the engine. So that covers that. Number three on my four on my list. I'm looking at my notes here because I don't remember things very well, so we got to have some notes. Um, number four is don't leave the heater on or leave it on all the time. This has to do with corrosion of the engine itself. If you heat the engine up, say, two hours a day and you don't go flying, okay, let's back up a little bit. Your oil has water in it. That's what you need to understand. If you understand that principle that your oil, your engine oil has water in it. If you wanna like research the science behind that, that's cool. But if you don't, just know that your oil has water in it. So when you heat the, and it's mixed in, it's not separated. You're like, oh, well, water and oil separate. Again, if you wanna research the science, it, it, it just doesn't, it's molecularly inside the oil. So when you heat that oil up, the water evaporates. When you have evaporating water um, and then a cool outside, as in the inside of your engine case, the water condenses on that, has nowhere to go. There are ways around that. Um, there are like dehydrators that go into your oil uh, filler that'll pull the moisture out. There's all kinds of different systems in there. If you leave the oil alone, say you get done flying and you park your airplane and you leave it, there's still gonna be con some condensation in there and whatnot. I've even heard people park in the airplane and when it's hot, they get straight out and open the oil filler and let them some moisture out. 
I don't know how effective that is. I'm sure it lets out a lot of the moisture because if it's trapped in there, it has nowhere to go, then it recondenses uh, into the oil. Um, but if you sporadically heat your engine up, say it's in the middle of winter and you're like, well, every day at 10 o'clock, my engine warms up for three hours and then it turns off and sometimes I fly and sometimes I don't. That is a recipe for disaster because every day you're basically making a condensation shower inside your engine and it's getting on your crank and your camshaft and all kinds of stuff and then it's sitting there and creating rust where a lot of times rust would never exist if you didn't heat it. The best thing to do is either heat 24 seven, like with a blanket on it all the time, which is really a waste and unnecessary. But again, you would have to get the moisture out. Uh, but it depends, if you have it in a heated hangar that's sitting at 70 degrees every day, well, that means your engine is warm all the time. So, but you just have to understand that if the outside of the engine case is cold and the inside or just the bottom is warm, then your moisture is going to come out of the oil and condense on the metal and create a rain shower of moisture inside of everything and rust it all up. Now, if the inside of the engine is just the exact same temperature as the outside of the engine and it's warm all of the time, like it's parked in Arizona or something, <clears throat> then you're not going to have that temperature differential and all of that moisture sitting in there. Again, those are just the basic principles. Um, there are lots of different systems, uh, equipment, things that you can get that deals with all of those different things. But for the vast majority of us aircraft owners, all you need to know is that when you're going to fly and it's below freezing, preheat the engine. When you're done flying, be done. Don't keep the engine warm. Just leave it alone. Don't spin the prop. Uh, if you have an aircraft and it's parked for a long time, people think, oh, I'll spin the prop and that'll lube everything up. No, all you're doing is wiping the oil off of everything and you're not resupplying oil uh, and that's bad. So when you're done flying, leave it alone. When you're ready to fly again, below freezing, heat it up, go flying, land, park it, leave it alone. Hope this video helped you out. If it did, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, keep an eye out for more videos. See you later.